On September the 11th, enemies of freedom committed an act of war against our country. Americans have known wars, but for the past 136 years, they have been wars on foreign soil, except for one Sunday in 1941. Americans have known the casualties of war, but not at the center of a great city on a peaceful morning. Americans have known surprise attacks, but never before on thousands of civilians. This is Building 7, a 47-story skyscraper that fell on the afternoon of September 11th. The government says that fire brought it down. However, 1,500 architects and engineers concluded it was a controlled demolition. Over 6,000 of my fellow service members have given their lives. And thousands of my fellow first responders are dying. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a structural engineer. I'm a New York City correction officer. I'm an Air Force pilot. I'm a father who lost his son. We're Americans. And we deserve the truth. Go to rememberbuilding7.org today. Warships are called HMCS, Her Majesty's Canadian Ship, and in Australia they're called HMAS, Her Majesty's Australian Ship. Canada's National Police Force is called the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. All government contracts are between a company or individual and Her Majesty. Court summons are issued in the name of the Queen, and all public inquiries are called Royal Commissions. Commonwealth money carries the Queen's image worldwide as a reminder of her authority. 
The Queen is the lifetime hereditary head of state of Great Britain and her colonies and is unelected and unaccountable. It is against the law to advocate the abolition of the monarchy. After the revolution, the French started calling her the lady, but in English, the queen is still the queen. Move, I tell you. Originally in India, Persia, and Arabia, she was male and weak. Check to your grace. But she changed sex in Europe in the Middle Ages and became the strongest of all chess pieces. I fear the queen is powerless now. The queen is never powerless. For example... What is the cost to British taxpayers to support the Queen and her blue blood entourage? The Public Accounts Committee and National Audit Office are forbidden to examine Queen Elizabeth Windsor's family finances, but the civil list payments are reviewed every 10 years. So for the year ended March 2002, the running expenses of the Windsor household were 7.9 million pounds, family spending 35.3 million, security 30 million, and the list goes on. How much is the Queen actually worth? The Queen's wealth is divided into three categories. Her wealth is the monarch, her visible personal wealth, and her invisible personal wealth. The Queen's wealth as the monarch includes 54 Commonwealth nations worldwide, millions of acres of crown land and resources, thousands of crown corporations, and the corporate city-state of London, which is the capital of world finance. The Queen's visible personal wealth, which was accumulated tax-free until 1992, includes royal yachts, Rolls Royces, racehorses, five castles, the world's largest collection of jewels, 20,000 old masterpieces, and billions of Class A shares in blue-chip stocks and bonds, which have been invested and reinvested over and over again tax-free. Most of the Queen's family fortune was inherited from her ancestors' illegal opium trade with China and the black slave trade. In 1977, the Bank of England nominees was established to hide the Queen's personal portfolio of wealth. As the British monarch, the Queen has access to privileged information, state secrets, and the world's top financiers. She is immune to accusations of insider trading or conflicts of interest. Her financial portfolio includes Rio Tinto, General Electric, Royal Dutch Shell, British Petroleum, Archer Daniels Midland, and the list goes on. The Queen's visible billions are but a tiny fraction of her invisible wealth accumulated through the black nobility. What is the black nobility? The black nobility is a wealthy aristocracy of elite ruling families who solidified their power in the 12th century by intermarrying with the wealthy godfather families of Venice, Italy. During the bloodbaths of the Christian Crusades, this brutal Italian oligarchy captured the trading monopolies. Over the centuries, the black nobility have used their power and wealth to rape, plunder, and exploit every corner of the globe. Dr. John Coleman's book, The Committee of 300, describes the history of assassinations, kidnappings, robbery, rape, blackmail, coercion, and terror committed by these inbred families on a grand scale. Today, they enrich themselves from the illegal drug and arms trade using well-distance intermediaries. An estimated $280 billion in flight capital and drug money flows into their secret Swiss accounts. Who are these ruling black nobility families? They include the House of Hanover, Germany, the House of Habsburg, Austria, the House of Orange, Netherlands, the House of Liechtenstein in Liechtenstein, and most importantly, the House of Guelph in Britain. All of these family houses can be found on Queen Elizabeth II's family tree. The black nobility are the founders of the Committee of 300, which is also known as the Illuminati or Illuminated Ones. Queen Elizabeth II is head of the committee of these 300 ruling families. The Illuminati was formed to achieve one main objective, one world government called the New World Order. NWO spells own backwards. All of today's think tanks originate from the Committee of 300 and include the Round Table, 
the CFR Council on Foreign Relations, the United Nations, the Bilderbergs, the Club of Rome, the RIIA, and the Trilateral Commission founded by David Rockefeller. Since the British colonization of America, many powerful American families have formed secret societies that cooperate with the black nobility, like the Skull and Bones Fraternity at Yale University, which is rooted in German Freemasonry. Its exclusive members are some of America's most powerful and wealthy men, including two United States presidents, President George W. Bush and his father, President George Herbert Walker Bush. The Order of the Skull and Bones is located on the campus of Yale University. John Pogue is a Yale graduate and the producer of a Hollywood movie called Skulls, based on the chilling radiation night. Chosen members enter a windowless hall on campus where they strip naked and lay inside a coffin. During the rituals, they reveal their innermost secrets, including the intimate details of their sexual history. Senior bonesmen dressed in robes chant over the new member in a symbolic death and rebirth ceremony. Each new member takes a vow, swearing a lifetime commitment to the Brotherhood secretly known as the Brotherhood of Death. The cross bones symbolize the right of new members to double cross and use any means possible on their rise to power. They're supposed to recount their entire sexual histories in sort of a dim uh, a dimly lit, cozy room. The other 14 members are sitting on uh, plush couches and the lights are dimmed and there's a fire roaring. And uh, the, this activity is supposed to last anywhere from between one to three hours. So George Bush, George W. Bush, recounted his sexual history? That would have been something they would have done, yes. What is the point of this? I believe the point of the year in the tomb is to forge such a strong bond between these 15 new members that after they graduate, for them to betray Skull and Bones would mean they'd have to betray their 14 closest friends. One can't help but make certain comparisons with, uh, with mafia, for example. Secret society, <clears throat> bonding, stakes may be a little higher in one than the other, <laughs> but everybody knows everything about everybody which is a form of protection. I think Skull and Bones has had slightly more success than the Mafia um, in the sense that, you know, the leaders of the five families are all doing a hundred years in jail and the leaders of the Skull and Bone families are doing four and eight years in the White House. Bones is not restricted to Republicans. Yet another Bonesman has his eye on the Oval Office. Senator John Kerry Skull and Bones is so tiny, that's what makes this staggering. There are, there are only 15 people a year, which means there are about 800 living members at any one time. We know that a lot of Bonesmen have gone to positions of great power. That's what Skull and Bones' purpose is, to get as many members as possible into positions of power. Though there is this mythology about Skull and Bones running, pulling the strings of government. You're saying the fact is Skull and Bones are pulling the strings of government. They do have many individuals in influential positions, and that's why this is something that we need to know about. The New England Genealogy Society confirms that 19 U.S. presidents are descendants of King Edward III of England. Like European royalty, America's blue bloodlines are maintained through intermarriage. George W. Bush is descended from several kings of England and Scotland. He is also a distant cousin of Queen Elizabeth II of England. of the Committee of 300 have given birth to the Tavistock Institute, HARP, the Rand Corporation, Stanford Research Institute, and the Institute for Policy Studies, among others. One study group at the Rand Corporation specializes in predicting the timing and direction of thermonuclear war. 
These institutes and corporations are engaged in the secretive development of brainwashing and population control techniques, the mapping and patenting of human and animal DNA, and the genetic engineering.